There are a lot of hells that we developers have to deal with. There is callback hell, inheritance hell, exceptions hell. Well, Java developers have to deal with another hell that's unique to the language, logging hell. If you want to log something in Java, there are like a million different options for logging frameworks to choose from. Which one do you use? Even if you were to look at just the popular ones, there are multiple logging libraries. So why did this happen? How did we get here? In this video, I'll tell you an interesting story of how we got to this mess and the best choice of logging libraries and frameworks for you to make in your application. To understand why we have this mess of Java logging frameworks, let's start from the beginning. What is it that we actually need? We just need something to log messages and errors, right? We just need like an object that has log methods. And anytime you want to log something, you say, hey object, log this. You pass it the message or the stack trace or whatever else you need to log. And of course the logging itself should ideally be to a file that you can go and open later and not just to a console. Okay, that's what we want. I mean, come on, how hard can that be? Well, the basic requirement isn't hard at all. In fact, JDK comes with a logging library built in, and it has since JDK 1.4. You must have heard of it. It's in the java.util.logging package. Granted, it's not a full-fetched logging framework or anything like that, but it does the job, I guess. Here's a Java doc for the logging functionality. The key class here is java.util.logging.logger, which has a static method called getLogger. You pass it the class name, and now you go get that logger object that you can hold on to and say things like, hey, object, go log this. It has a concept of log levels, although the names are a little bit weird. You got logger.info for informational messages. You have a dot severe for errors and a dot fine for debug messages. You know, it's like, it's all cool. I'm just debugging here. Everything is just fine. All right, anyway, java.util.logging uh, also introduced a bunch of other concepts, right? It introduced the concepts of handlers. Handlers are something that you can use to tell the library how to handle logging requests. You have console handler, which logs to the console, and file handler, well, you can guess what that does. Okay, so now we've got logging in Java built in. End of story, right? Well, sadly, no. Here's the thing about logging that came with JDK. It kind of sucked. Developers started complaining that it wasn't performant enough, it wasn't flexible enough. People wanted it to handle multiple use cases and scenarios that it just wasn't meant to handle. So now what you have here is this perfect confluence of factors. You have this need for a logging library that's kind of almost universal. And you have this out-of-the-box functionality in the JDK that doesn't do the job properly. Well, guess what happens next? Yeah, people start creating their own libraries. So you have people rolling their own solutions in their apps, many open source logging libraries are created, and this is kind of the beginning of the logging mess. Eventually though, as it happens with uh, most of things like this, there were a handful of libraries that gained popularity and many people started using. The oldest and the most popular logging library that sustained all this craziness over the years was Log4j. It has pretty much the same basic use. It has its own logger class. The package is different, obviously, but you initialize it pretty much the same way, passing in the name of the class. The method names are a little less weird. You've got logger.info, logger.error, and logger.debug. Instead of handlers, log4j has this concept of appenders. You have uh, all kinds of appenders uh, you could use. You have file appenders, console appenders, rolling file appenders that can create a new log file each day. JDBC appenders to directly log to the database, SMTP appenders to send log messages via email, JMS appenders, SMTP appenders. It also had formatting options for the messages itself. All in all, a pretty useful logging library. Okay, so that's log4j. Is this the end of the logging story? Well, unfortunately, no. While log4j became very popular, there were still multiple logging libraries in use, including the JDK bundled Java Util one. Each one had their own API and their own way of logging. So when you had to switch from one library to another, you had to go back and change all those places where you were interacting with the library. 
This is when people started using facade libraries like the Apache Commons logging and SLF4J, of which SLF4J became super duper popular. The concept of facade libraries is pretty simple. These libraries contain no functionality, they just have interfaces, all right? So these libraries provide like a standard API that you can use to do logging. Then these libraries in turn call another library to do the actual logging. So when you code, you don't care if the project has log4j or any other logging system. You use, uh, let's say, the SLF4j syntax, the SLF4j API. And then you add a jar that actually implements the interface, which is actually calling log4j underneath. And then, of course, you need the actual log4j library that does the actual work. If you want to use some other logging library, well, throw in that library and maybe an SLF4J implementation that calls that library. In fact, SLF4J became so popular that logging libraries started coming with their own SLF4J implementations out of the box. So you didn't even have to use an extra adapter. So that is SLF4J. It's kind of like an API and it doesn't do the actual job. It's actually just providing a facade to other logging libraries, which is doing the actual work. Now, two new libraries came up over the years, which were Logback and Log4j2. They were both considered successors for Log4j with additional features and improved performance. They also have support for SLF4j out of the box, like we discussed. So you can continue to use the SLF4j API and use either of these libraries for logging. A note on SLF4j though. You might be wondering, well, why have all this extra complexity? Why don't you make up your mind about a logging library and then use it directly? Or maybe you write your own single wrapper class and call the logging library directly from there. So your code uses this wrapper class everywhere. And when you want to replace your logging framework, well, you just change this one wrapper class. Yeah, why you use SLF4J? I'll tell you why. Consider this case. You're a library developer. You're working on a library that might be included in multiple different applications. And those applications may have their own choice for a logging framework. So what logging framework do you use in your library code? Will you use logback? Okay, well then your library needs logback as a dependency. If the app consuming your library uses something like, let's say, log4j2, now they will end up having two logging libraries doing separate logging. However, if you use SLF4j, then the only logging dependency your library has to bring in is SLF4j. The application can use any lo logging library that it wants, and then your logging library will log messages with that logging library that the application brings in, and you don't bring in any logging library yourself. Make sense? All right, so this is the importance for SLF4J, and this kind of brings us to the recommended logging strategy. Now that you've learned about the various logging frameworks and libraries, the question left is, which one to use? Well, there is a part of this answer which is obvious, which is the interface part. No matter which actual library you use, using SLF4J is kind of a given. Considering how widely it's used, it's a safe bet to always use the SLF4J API in your code directly. As for the actual logging library itself, I recommend choosing between logback and log4j2. They're both pretty much successors for the old log4j, which isn't being actively developed anymore. I generally recommend going with logback because it's a slightly more popular library at this time, and also because it's developed by the same guy who wrote the initial log4j library and who also wrote SLF4j. So I kind of recommend that. However, log4j2 offers some small improvements over logback in certain specific cases. Like, for example, it offers lazy evaluation of log statements. You can pass in a lambda expression and not the actual statement, and it kind of evaluates the log statement lazily. It also has asynchronous logging and more such stuff. So if you need those features, go with log4j2. If not, Logback is a pretty good option for your typical logging needs. Okay, well, how does logging work in a real world application? Well, check out this video where I talk about logging in a Spring Boot application where I walk through step by step what you need to do to enable logging and how you can customize some of the aspects of logging.